Hi, this is uh, Doug from Unique 3 Phase, and I was putting together some uh, converter boxes. I have a 25 horse air compressor and a 30 horse air compressor, and I was building some boxes. I wanted to uh, run those and put them together, and I started working on this 30 horse, and I started realizing maybe I should just do a quick filming of it because this is something that's totally different than what I'm normally used to reciprocating for compressors. This is a rotary screw, 30 horse. Uh, we're going to run it on a single phase. And I thought it might be handy, it might be instructive. Uh, some people might learn by seeing what I go through when I'm doing something like this. I, I've run this a few times, and there were some tricky parts to it. And let me explain that on a reciprocating compressor, you have unloader valves at the top of the cylinders. And you got good old pistons going up and down. Everybody understands that, a crankshaft, you know, pumps air. Everything's just great. And when it unloads, it unloads. So like you take that 25 horse air compressor I've seen, you've seen in a couple other videos where I ran it. I can idle that compressor at 30 amps. It just runs along 30 amps, so it doesn't draw that much. The 10 horse, you know, runs 10, 12 amps when it idles. Then it cuts in and it pumps. Well, these rotary screw compressors are, are entirely different. They started off in, I guess, the 1960s or something. And first of all, they produced lower pressure. This one here actually is rated to go to 185, but the, you can see the pulleys on here are designed to overdrive it to get 100 pounds of pressure, 120, I think, 110. So in order to regulate that, because you're not building up a big thing at 175 and then drawing off of that, you're, just, you're using 100 pounds and your, your compressor is generating 100 pounds. So this thing right here on the top is a regulator valve, and all it does is block off the intake. And so... Over here on the side, you can't really see it in this video, but over here on the side is a little pressure regulator. And when it gets up to like 97, 98 pounds or whatever, it, it just starts to close a valve in here and cut the uh, intake off. And then it runs with the intake blocked off. The only problem that I can see right away when I first started doing it is it uses 80% of the current to run completely blocked off. So if it's not producing any air whatsoever, you're drawing 80% of what it would produce max air. And so there's some theories on this. Some people say that you can convert these where it blocks it off completely or it unloads it completely. And, and if you block it off completely and unload this tank, you can get the amps down. I don't know if that's really worth it. I'm going to experiment with That's one of the things I'm going to experiment. But right now it's set up to modulate. It'll, it'll keep the air pressure at 100 pounds or wherever I set it and run it at 100 pounds. Now, when I fiddled around, I had, this valve was bad, and I, had to, I took it apart, cleaned it out. So putting it together, I got optimistic, and I said, let me jack in the screw a little bit and raise the pressure. So I just screwed in this screw a whole bunch of turns. I turned this thing on. It fills the tank so quickly. There's no margin of error whatsoever. So all of a sudden, I'm trying to make sure nothing's leaking, nothing's going wrong. There's not oil pump. This is you know, got oil in it under pressure. Not oil dripping out somewhere. I'm trying to go over there to my uh, board, my test box, and balance it. And I mean, the ants just shot right up 140 amps of, of single phase power. And I could see that things were overloading, so I had to cut it off. So now I've got this back down. I backed it down. I think it's around 100 pounds it unloads at. So we're going to start it up. We're going to run it. And I'm going to go over there. I have another camera on my test box. And what you're going to see is you're going to see what I go through when, uh, let me go over there right now then. You're going to see what I go through with starting something like this. For First of all, you can't start this compressor 20 times in an hour. I mean, it's, it's a huge power surge. The compressor manufacturers, the motor manufacturers, they all say you can start the motor about six times an hour. And, and after that, you're overheating it. <clears throat> so what I did was I had, I had my capacitors... And if I remember right, the first time I did it, I put in all this top row and I put in this, I put in most of this row. And I've got the air pressure gauge here and I got also, this is a vacuum gauge, but it's, it's in capacity. And so when that slider valve starts closing, if it goes down to zero, that means it's completely closed and you're, in theory you're not putting out any air. If it's at 50%, you're putting out, so it tells you what level uh, you're pumping air. And this, in a, obviously, in a big, huge plant, 
the maintenance guy goes down there and if he sees that all day it's at 80 percent then he knows okay you know that's how much air we're using if it's 100 percent constantly and you're running out of air then you know you need a bigger compressor so i'm going to start i'm going to start with i think that was right around there this is the input that's the three legs and let's let's start it and see uh see what happens here always fun to do things <laughs> Okay, so one of the first things you notice right now is 110 amps, and that's a little high. Well, that's about it's, a, it's a probably about good then. here to drain the air off but the hose is there's some restriction in the hose so I can't actually drain off as much as the compressor will produce.
uh, capacity. Now, It actually was actually successful. Sometimes these things aren't so successful. But you saw that I had, I'm playing with a few capacitors in here on those switches. And I can, I, what happens is when you start a 30 horse motor, it's a huge amount of amps. And you've got to, uh, you got to come in here and start balancing the thing because you really, you really have no idea what the, what it is. You've just guessed it how many capacitors it needs. So, this one right now, this, this whole video, I mean, I was actually was hoping it would go worse so you could see more of a problem and having to fix the problem. But actually, it went, it went real smooth. I mean, it started up and ran. And I will set up probably some sort of a circuit in there. And I will decide on, on what, what balance we want at what pl places. Probably going to have two where, you know, it's either on or off or uh, whatever. But, you, but it needs, this is the transformer converter. And it needs, uh, like here, you can see. Uh, there's the bo there's the box I'm making for either this or the 25. You can see behind it, I've got a 25 kVA transformer, and I've got putting the capacitors and stuff in there, and switches and relays. But anyway, that's that's so much for the video running the 30 horse. Uh, kept it simple and uh, not too long. <laughs>